When Kia first introduced the Soul nearly 10 years ago, it was actually late to the uh, boxy compact hatchback segment. Remember, this, this competed with vehicles like the Scion XB, the Nissan Cube, and the Honda Element. Now, over the years, the other competitors actually just went away because of poor sales, while Kia's Soul went on to be the best selling of all these small boxy hatchbacks. It competes in a very unique segment. So today, I'm just outside of San Diego, California, where Kia has brought along me and a bunch of other journalists to drive this. This is the all new third generation 2020 Soul. And what I want to know is, is this still the boxy, quirky, cool hatchback that it was 10 years ago? That's what we're here to find out. Looking at the design of the all new third generation model, you can tell that Kia has gone a completely different direction with the overall front face. So the basic silhouette of the car hasn't changed, but this particular one that I'm showing you definitely has a new face that we haven't seen on other Kia products really. The first thing you're probably wondering, where is the tiger nose grill? Well, Kia actually has moved it down to this lower part of the fascia and made the grill significantly larger, whereas the previous generation, it was actually up here on the upper portion. Now this particular one that I'm showing you is the GT line. Kia is actually going to launch this vehicle in seven different Trims. This is the sportiest and most expensive one that you can get uh, for now. The Soul Electric or EV will be coming out at a later date. This is the only trim to get along with the EX designer package. If you guys want full LED headlights, you'll have LED low and high beams, you'll have an LED running light, and then down here you'll have LED turn signals and LED fog lights. Now keep in mind, we also are driving an X-Line version that has halogen headlights, and Kia has actually swapped the position of the headlights, whereas in the X-Line, the headlights are down here while the turn signal is up on this upper portion. And overall, the look is definitely growing on me. I think I still prefer the look of the second generation model, but this is definitely something that's gonna be very distinctive, especially if you guys get the one with the LED lights. So from the side profile, you can see that Kia actually hasn't changed the overall boxy shape. Uh, they actually made the vehicle about 2.2 inches longer in the overall length, and the wheelbase is about an inch uh, longer than the previous generation. It's, it's still at only 165 inches long. This is roughly about five to 10 inches shorter than most of the competitions. Remember, this is a, a car that's like a subcompact hatchback. Now, this GT line does come standard with 18 inch wheels. They're wrapped in 235, 45 series tires. The X line model and the EX designer also comes with 18 inch wheels. If you guys want smaller wheels, you'll have to step down to like an L, an, S, an LX or an S trim, which will have a 16 or a 17 inch alloy wheel. Now, one thing about this car, it rides on an all new platform, Kia says. It's kind of shared with the Hyundai Kona and the uh, vehicle will come standard with four wheel disc brakes. This particular trim with the turbo engine uh, comes with larger brakes. They're about an inch bigger versus the standard ones. And you still have that twist beam semi-independent rear suspension. So you still don't get that fully independent suspension. Despite that, Kia says that they've tuned this vehicle to be a lot sportier. And overall, I think it still has that distinctive look. I'm not sure how I feel about this particular area here where it kind of has that floating roof design with the sole embroidered on the side but overall you're going to be able to instantly recognize this vehicle as the boxy hamster car. So from the rear end of the new sole you can see Kia has made pretty extensive changes to the actual taillight design. They kind of had this boomerang complete wraparound style to the taillights. For me, I actually don't like the rear design of the vehicle. I think the previous generation looked much better. It's kind of an LED combination rear light where you have to get this, the higher trims to get that LED combination because the brake light is LED, but the turn signals and the reverse lights are also an incandescent light. Now, being the GT line here, you can see it takes that GT badge that's kind of inspired from the Kia Stinger, but don't confuse this as like a full-on GT model, kind of thing that is like an Audi S line or a BMW M Sport model. The GT line with the turbo is the only one to get that center-mounted exhaust, uh, which definitely makes it look a lot more distinctive and it produces a slightly more distinctive sound. Now the Soul also is still a hatchback. It's a ridiculously practical car and Kia actually was able to improve the rear cargo area on this generation. It's now rated at 23.4 cubic feet, which is actually about five cubic feet more than what you got on the previous generation. If you want to fold down the second row seats, Kia says you're going to get around 62 cubic feet of space, which really just matches a lot of uh, compact SUVs and it's more space than what you're going to get in a lot of the subcompact um, hatchbacks that this vehicle would compete with. So 
So the outside of the 2020 Soul is very distinctive, but let's move on to the interior of this all new version and see all the changes that Kia has made. Let me first show you guys the key fob for the vehicle. It's the same key that's on the Kia Stinger. So it's a really nice key that actually has a really cool design to it. All the buttons here are on the side of the vehicle. You can also uh, open up the hatch, although it's not a power hatch from here. There's no remote start in the actual key fob, but it looks cool. It feels really nice in your hands. Now, as you approach the door handle of the all new Soul, you're gonna see there's a black door handle here that shows up really well on this white color. Just touch that button here, the doors will lock for you. And if you want to unlock the door key, it doesn't do a sensor in the back of the handle. You have to touch the door handle again, and that unlocks the door for you. Now, looking at the interior of this particular one, uh, this GT line comes with this two-tone Sofino and leatherette material. You can see it's got kind of a cloth insert here with some red stitching, that leatherette material on the outer portion. Uh, it's got a sole embroidered into the side of the seat back here. It's definitely an interesting looking seat. The one thing you're probably wondering, if you're looking for like a full leather interior, Interior, the Kia just doesn't offer it. Uh, this trim and the EX designer package gives you this two-tone uh, leatherette seat combination. You also get a 10-way power adjustable driver seat. Uh, no actual memory seats. I don't think the Soul has ever offered memory seats. It would be nice to see them include that, but no. And then uh, for now, you only get two level heated seats. You have to get this interior color, or I'm sorry, you have to get this fabric, this two-tone fabric to get the heated seats, which are two-way. Um, the ventilated seats that were available on the previous generation uh, are no longer available on this new generation Soul, so Kia did take away that option. The steering wheel, as you can see, unique to the GT line with its flat bottom design, looks good, reminds me a lot of the Kia Stinger. Now getting into the interior of the new Soul, you're gonna notice that the step-in height hasn't really changed. This is, again, a compact hatchback that tries to remind you a little bit of a crossover. It doesn't sit up as high, for sure, as a crossover. When you shut the door, you can hear it sounds pretty solid. Kia says this is an all new platform and it makes a really nice solid thunk when you shut the door. Now, uh, when you wanna start the vehicle up, just keep the key fob in the vehicle and then push the button here to fire up the engine. Now you can see the gauges, they remind you a lot of other Kia products. They are not very different, honestly, from the previous generation. I'm surprised the little LCD screen there is on the smaller side. I wanted Kia to do like a full seven inch display, but it's just not on this particular version. Now, the engine, You know, it's just the 1.6 liter turbocharged four cylinder. It's carryover from the previous generation. It provides 201 horsepower, so really good performance uh, for something in this segment. Now, looking at the rest of this cabin, you can see a lot of interesting design elements here that Kia has included. The dashboard here uh, has this very nice looking 10.25 inch uh, Uvo uh, in infotainment system. This is uh, their newest, latest version of the infotainment system. Those of you who really hate those tablet style screens are gonna love the fact that Kia did not put a tablet style screen in here which is nice. You can see the graphics have been markedly improved. You've got a big widescreen. You've got standard Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Now keep in mind, if you guys want this big 10.25 inch display, you have to go for uh, an EX trim or up. The other trims will come with a seven inch display. So that's kind of something that you have to keep in mind if you guys want that display. Let me go to that in just a second. The materials in here, you can see the dashboard is all soft touch, which is really nice. You have a new upgraded Harman Kardon sound system here with 10 speakers and 640 watts of power, which is actually double the wattage which you got in the previous generation. You have some real uh, stitching and leather over the instrument panel hood, which is nice. The door panels are soft touch over here, which is good. The window is one touch automatic for the driver and only the driver's side. I'm surprised that Kia didn't actually include that for the uh, other other windows, or at least the front window, the other front window. But um, over here, you have a nice padded armrest. There's a nice little grab handle over here. This is also soft touch over here on this up, uh, portion of the door panel. This material here is interesting. It's like a textured aluminum look silver painted plastic. The door handle here feels like it's actually aluminum. It's a really nice looking design. Kia actually says at night, the LED lighting that's splashed um, over here will kind of light up this area right here. It'll light up the lower part of the speaker covers over here. Uh, and you can interchange the color with six different mood lighting. So that's a really cool feature. The Soul has always had that. It'll even pulsate to the music. That's something that the Soul has again always done. Now below you, you have dual zone automatic climate control that's included on the EX trims and up. That's a new feature before it was only a single zone automatic. Uh, so they definitely upgraded that. There's a nice little storage compartment here. Wireless charging is included on this upper trim. The EX and up trims, I believe, gives you the wireless charging. USB, another power outlet over there. Good storage from your phone, although you can't really 
close that up if you'd like to. You can see here, just two level heated seats, which is kind of a downgrade versus last year. You have your drive mode here. It's just normal and sport, so pretty simple in that regard. You have a heated steering wheel on this particular trim. This controls the seven speed dual clutch transmission, which gives you a dedicated sport mode there with manual mode, or you can also use the paddles on the wheel. Now, speaking of the steering wheel, as I said before, it's heated. Uh, your controls here for your cruise control, the smart cruise control is right here. It's a nice looking steering wheel. I like the design. I like the real metal trim and the flat bottom here. Kia calls it a D-cut steering wheel. The steering wheel itself is also tilt and telescoping and offers a really good level of adjustability, so that's really important. Uh, my tester here also has a head-up display that is included as part of the uh, basically this trim level. It's basically that flip-up head-up display um, that we've seen on other Hyundai Kia products. You can see it shows you your speed, it shows you any kind of navigation information. It's definitely nice, although I wish it was an actual projection onto the screen. If you want the head-up display, you have to get this GT line with the turbocharged engine. The base two-liter engine that's in the GT line as well does not include the head-up display, or maybe just as part of an option. When you put the vehicle into reverse, you can see the backup camera shows you a really nice view. Actually, they've really upgraded the resolution. It's got um, trajectory, it's got uh, the really nice looking trajectory. No, no parking sensors, I believe. Um, yeah, no, no rear parking sensors would surprise me, although this is a small car, you don't really need something like that. No 360 camera either. Again, you don't really necessarily need anything like that. The navigation display, you can see here, is the typical Kia navigation system. It works pretty well, it gets the job done. Um, and again, if you'd like, you can also take off this split screen here, which will allow you to kind of, allow you to do or just show like a much larger screen. So if I go back here to nav, you can see the nav screen actually takes up the whole thing. Or most of you will probably just plug in your phone and use the Apple Maps or the Waze uh, from whatever your smartphone offers you since most, most people are tending to go with that direction anyways. Down here you can see a uh, standard uh, pull manual style parking brake. Some of, some of you will really appreciate that. Uh, cup holders over there. You have a nice little uh, center console here with no USB or power outlet in there but it does provide good storage. This over here doesn't adjust, but it has a nice soft padded area over there. The seats, um, they're definitely a little bit more aggressively bolstered for this trim. I just wish that Kia offered a full leather option, but some of you may prefer that. I miss the cooled seats that the old model gave you. Just really, really sad about that. The glove compartment here you can see is a pretty good size. It's standard size. It's stamped, but not lined with felt. Above you, panoramic sunroof. I'm sorry, guys, is gone. If you guys want an actual sunroof, you have to get this trim level to get the sunroof. It's not even available on the lower trims, which is a little infuriating. It's just something that the sole was really, you know, um, unique with it was that panoramic sunroof and the cooled seats. So they've taken away those options. You still get LED lighting in the cabin on the upper trim, which is still nice. But overall, this interior still feels roomy. It still feels relatively upscale. Love the bigger screen, but I'm really sad about the fact that we lost cooled seats and the panoramic sunroof. But other than that, it's still a really nice interior. So getting into the back seat of the Soul, this is actually where the vehicle has been typically a strong suit here. Remember, this is a box on wheels, so you have plenty of space. Now, in terms of rear seat legroom, Kia actually says they reduced it ever so slightly. You're still getting around 38.8 uh, inches of legroom, which is only like a reduction of 0.2. So this is still one of the most spacious rear seats in the segment. And then as you can see here, I'm five foot seven, plenty of headroom. Now, one thing you're also gonna notice, the lack of the panoramic sunroof um, did, I wanna say it improved the headroom a little bit, but it just makes the cabin feel a little more, more dark, especially when you're uh, in the back seat. Now, in terms of the materials back here, it's actually hard touch plastic on the door so it's a little bit downgraded from the front. You get one map pocket, one USB port, no actual rear seat vents, no heated rear seats. I want to say the previous generation offered something like that if you guys got the Primo package. Now, um, you do have a little folding armrest here that comes down that gives you two cup holders, but overall, the back seat is still pretty practical, and a lot of you are going to be able to put full-size adults back here. So under the hood of the all-new third-generation Soul, Kia actually offers a choice of three different powertrains, which is about one less than what you got on the previous generation. Now, the base model Souls will come with the two-liter new four-cylinder engine. It's a port-injected engine. It's the engine that we've seen in the Kia Forte and the Hyundai Elantra. It makes 147 horsepower and 132 foot-pounds of torque. That is more horsepower than what you got on the old 1.6, but less uh, versus what you got on the old uh, two-liter engine that was in the previous generation. Now, um, some of you are probably going to want this model, uh, especially if you guys want more power. It's a 1.6 liter turbocharged GDI engine. It makes the same power as last year, 201 horsepower and 195 foot-pounds of torque. Now, transmissions, Kia still offers this car with a six-speed manual, only on the base two liter with the LX base trim. So if you guys want this model, you're stuck with an automatic. Um, the base two liter has a new IVT. It's a CVT transmission, the same one that I've sampled in the Forte, uh, which I'll try to also drive out as well during this program. This one, though, has a seven-speed dual-clutch transmission that we've seen for a while. Kia has made some tweaks to it over the years. 
years. Now, fuel economy has also been improved. Um, the base motor will do as good as 29 in the city and 35 on the highway if you guys get the Eco Dynamics package. Most of you probably will just get the standard with uh, transmission with the IVT. That one will do 27, 33, which is like an improvement of three MPG over the previous generation. This one actually isn't bad either. The 1.6 turbo is rated at 27 in the city, 32 on the highway. They all use regular gas. And for those of you who are wondering, this is still only front wheel drive. Kia doesn't offer an all wheel drive version. Now, as this one sits, uh, it weighs around 3,100 pounds. Kia was actually able to reduce the weight of this vehicle between two to 300 pounds, depending on the trim level. Now, let's get it out on the road and see how this turbo model performs. It doesn't really let you brake torque much. Not much. Aggressive start after that initial. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, as you guys can see, I've got Alex with me again. We are driving the 2020 Soul with the 1.6 liter turbo. And I actually haven't driven a Soul for a while now. The last one that I reviewed was a uh, 2017 with the new two liter engine uh, when it was first introduced. And Kia actually said that they only sold about 8% uh, that, had the new, that had the 1.6 turbo, which is a pretty good amount. Um, but ultimately, it makes the Soul a much more unique vehicle in this segment. I mean, it competes with uh, an interesting group of vehicles like the Toyota CHR, the Nissan Kicks. Maybe even you can compare it to like a Mini or a Fiat 500X. But the Soul's just kind of been a very unique vehicle. And honestly, first driving the new 2020 model, you definitely feel the fact that structurally this is about 35% more rigid. I do wish that Kia had put an independent rear suspension because on this rough road, it's a little bit bumpy per se. I mean, it's got the same 18 inch wheels on 235 series tires but it kind of reminds you that this is still an economy subcompact car um, that kind of blurs the line between a crossover and a hatchback thankfully driving the soul is still very easy it's got really great visibility um, good si good view from the side the front the back because it's you know a traditional box uh, the drive wise package though is only included on this trim as standard yeah. which i think is a kind of a interesting um, decision on kia's part considering like the chr has it all as standard hrv what about hrv how many does that does that have honda sensing as standard now i think on the upper trims we're probably both going to get hate mail <laughs> but i i think that hrv is late to the party in honda sensing okay i think the refreshed one they included yeah. on ex but we'll, i'll have to double check that and uh put an annotation somewhere but ultimately so we do get we do get autonomous braking in the lower end trims but just the lower speed one not the radar not the full range with the radar and pedestrian detection right you have to get basically if you want adaptive cruise control you have to get this this yeah. trim which is interesting because you know it's going to force a lot of people to have to pay a lot extra and we still don't know the full pricing on this one we both have our guesses like i think it's going to be like around twenty nine thousand. alex thinks it's going to be a couple grand less because the old one um, was about 27.5 when you guys got like the tech package, you guys got the sunroof package. Now speaking of which, just a standard size sunroof now, which is kind of sad because um, as you guys, some of you may know, Alex actually has a 2015 Soul, 2016 yeah. Soul EV. Um, so he's got the previous generation. Um, but Alex, I guess since you have this car, how, what are your just a quick initial thoughts about the differences and how this car feels? It definitely feels more rigid. You know, my, my Soul EV, definitely has supposedly the reason that we no longer have the big pano roof. Mm -hmm. uh, you, when, it, when it twists over uneven pavement, you can get a little squeaky from that back hatch yeah. here, just like an old minivan. Mm -hmm. um, but I think I'm actually okay with the squeaking because I love the panoramic roof and yeah. I'm a little sad that that's gone. Yeah. But the suspension does seem a little bit more civilized. This okay. isn't, this is, doesn't get too upset in bumps in the corners. Okay. Like some, like some of those twist beam axle cars can. Yeah. Yeah. So I it's mean, a good, it's a good twist beam. Yeah. I mean, it, it, for a subcompact car, you kind of forget that it is a subcompact car that's at a price point um, when you're driving this thing. But I will say that the, you know, the panel sunroof, the cooled seats that were available, yeah. it kind of made it feel a little more upscale. So I'm a little sad about that. But, but um, now we have this big BMW like screen. Yeah, the, the, the 10.25 inch screen looks good, but I want, I'll tell you what, since there's no one behind us, we're on the straight road. I want to floor it one more time <laughs> because uh, we can. And so remember this has the new dual clutch transmission. I'll turn off the traction control. I'll try brake torquing it again. Uh, and let's see what this car feels like. We are at about 4,000 feet above sea yes. level. Yeah. So it doesn't really let you brake torque it much. Clutch lifetime. <laughs> Just 
to the where it might squeak. <laughs> yeah, so not really much in terms of wheel spin and torque steer. So it does put the power down better than the previous generation. Yeah. So I'm happy about that. They must be mitigating something. The shifts from the dual clutch, you know, they've been improved over the years. This is still no like Volkswagen GTI dual clutch, but yeah. as Alex will tell you, it's a dry dual clutch system and you don't have to replace the fluid every 40,000 right. miles. Like in the VW, I just kind of wish it was a little quicker. It does come with these uh, paddle shifters here on this particular trim and they work okay. It, it downshifts all right. Yeah. And then when you want to actually pull the paddle to upshift, they're okay. It's, it feels like a normal automatic car. Yeah. The sound from this engine though, I, I think Kia could work on it. I mean, it's got that new center mounted exhaust. It just... It doesn't sound as good as the Veloster. Yeah, it just sounds like... Yeah an economy car at times. There are times where I'm like, okay, it makes a decent growl. Uh, we haven't driven the two liter IVT transmission combo yet, um, but ultimately the zero to 60 time for this car, I'm gonna say it's around seven seconds. So it is the quickest in the segment, quicker than like the HRV, the Fitz, the, the um, CHR, uh, the Jeep Renegade. Like this is probably quicker than anything, except if you're gonna compare it to like the minis, which are easily $10,000 more right. expensive than this when you guys actually And, and in order to get them. the mini faster than this, you do have to get the JCW mini with yeah. 228 horsepower. Yeah, and that's like almost so, 40 grand. Yeah. Like I was driving one of those last year and they're just way overpriced. So there's a reason why the Soul sells over 100,000 units every year. But it's kind of the funny thing with this one is that it's so much, this particular one is so much faster than any of its direct competition because nobody else bothers to give you that optional drivetrain. Yeah, yeah, and that's what makes the Soul, or continues to make the Soul very unique. But um, on these kind of corners here when we don't get hit by a big truck, uh, the steering <laughs> the steering on the Soul has also been markedly improved. It's, they've quickened the ratio. It has decent feedback. I mean, Hyundai and Kia, since they've brought on board Albert Bierman, he's really been working hard at improving the chassis. I just wish that it had an independent rear suspension. It would really yeah. settle down the rear end because you can feel it is jittery at times. You can feel that this car's chassis could handle way more. I would love to see Kia do like a true GT version with the Veloster yeah. and yeah, his powertrain. Like, or add all wheel drive to this thing. It'd be incredible if they would consider that. Now, fuel economy, I'm not going to be able to talk too much on that because uh, we're at a media event, but um, it's rated at 2432. Um, and the car's trip computer actually has been saying we're getting 24.1 over the last 72 miles. So that's actually not too bad. Uh, I'll have to wait until I get one back in DC to, to actually yeah. test out the fuel economy. But you can get this car up to 35 MPG if you guys go for that Eco Dynamics package, which... And for the first 90 miles, we weren't driving at undisclosed high speeds that were <laughs> teensy bit over the speed limit. Yeah, Alex was driving first, but yeah, we were we were trying to, you know, get a, get ahead of everyone else because we have to do all of our filming and whatnot. But overall, basically the Soul, you know, um, GT line remains the fun, pleasant, you know, mm -hmm. easy to drive commuter car that you can see out of well. It's roomy in here. The ride quality is still a little bit on the choppier yeah. side, but it's been markedly improved over the previous generation. It's quieter, which is It really is quieter. Surprising. Less road noise for sure. Yeah. Kia says they've added like three over 300 pounds extra of sound deadening materials, which is interesting because the car is actually almost 300 pounds lighter. And I didn't expect it to be quieter because my soul is not exactly quiet on the road. Right. And the Nero is not exactly quiet on the road for its category. So this actually kind of, I was kind of surprised by it being quieter. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's definitely um, a really great commuter car for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Like if you don't want this stereotypical, you know, you know, Honda Civic hatchback or Subaru Impreza hatchback, you want something different and you don't need the all-wheel drive, mm -hmm. but you want that boxy look. Remember, this is the last of the box cars. The Scion XB is gone, the Nissan Cube is gone, the Honda Element is gone. So obviously Kia's little hamster mobile has, has a unique formula that continues to work. And I have no doubts that this will remain Kia's uh, best-selling vehicle uh, for 2019. So even though Kia was late to the boxy hatchback segment, this crew went on to be the best-selling vehicle in the segment. In fact, it's Kia's best-selling vehicle in their lineup with the company moving around 104,000 of these in all of 2018. Only really the Sorento outsold it by like 3,000 units in 2018. There was a time where Kia was easily moving about 150,000 of these every year. So what's the deal with the Soul? Why is it so popular? Well, as you guys saw from the video, it's still the same ridiculously practical vehicle that it always was. It has an interior that's packed with a lot of technology, that new screen 
screen is fantastic. It's got a really premium looking cabin. It's got a spacious cabin, a big cargo area. It's also very easy to drive. And if you guys favor performance, the GT line definitely offers uh, some fun that you simply don't get in vehicles like the Toyota CHR or the Honda HRV. So those of you who are looking for fun, the GT line is definitely my pick. Um, there are a couple of niggles here. I mean, of course, the ride quality is still a little bit on the firmer side. Would love to see Kia do an independent rear suspension. I also would love to see them consider doing a high performance version, taking the engine out of the Veloster N and giving us maybe even an all wheel drive version. So there's lots of opportunity here for Kia to improve, but as this one sits, it's still one of the most um, interesting and unique uh, compact hatchbacks that you can buy on the market. Now, with all that said, what's it gonna cost? I wish I could give you full pricing, but Kia actually doesn't even have that available yet. They did say this will be going on sale in the spring of 2019, so probably in a month or so. The car actually starts at $17,490 for the base model that's plus destination. I don't know the price of this turbo GT line because Kia doesn't have full pricing yet. The previous generation was around $23,000. Uh, if you guys added all the options, it was around $27,500. I'm gonna estimate this one stickers for around $29,000 with destination but keep in mind that um, Kia could adjust the pricing which I'll be able to reflect uh, in the description later later when Kia actually has that available but I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on this 2020 Kia Soul if you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews like us on Facebook and as always guys please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews thank you so much for watching I'll catch you all in the next video